Hello, good day, and welcome back. <clears throat> so, two things before I get started. Apologize for not being able to post a video earlier. I was on vacation, so I recorded a number of videos and had them scheduled to be released, and then I was trying to at least create another one or two while I was on vacation. That did not happen, so sorry for the long break. The second thing is that I'm a little bit under the weather, so please do excuse my voice and maybe some coughing from time to time as I try to record this. So, let's get into it. So the last time we left off, oh, finally, I realized um, by mistake that I did not commit the chapter 10 source code as I was working through chapter 10. And I did not realize that all the time. So uh, until today. So I started working on the solution, which is what we're going to cover today. And I'll explain a little bit what it means is basically you didn't have the code all of this time. So anyway, we left off here. Um, on task edit exercise because in that previous um, video in the one before that seven we work on creating list and so on and now and then in eight um, I ended by giving you an exercise to finish task edit and so today we're going to work on the solution um, for that exercise all right so let me put this away um, so basically um, all the time I was working on chapter 10 I did not commit the code and it's only today that I noticed that so you could see the last commit I did was on chapter 9 and that was pushed out chapter 9 11 but all the sections in chapter 10 I did not commit the video so sorry about that you didn't get those changes but never mind I'm going to um, push out that out today after this video um, of course you're not gonna see the incremental changes you're pretty much gonna see you know the cumulative um, results so far but I had started working on a solution before I realized that oh that was the case and so I've already started doing some of the work and I'll show you where where I am at and then we'll continue from there so I have MongoDB running and now I'm going to I'm in a to-do app directory I'm going to get this running by npm run dev if you remember that's how we run our application and it starts up two processes npm start and gulp and so it started up my the application and launched it on my browser off screen so i'm gonna pull that back on screen and so there it is and as you can see i have um, two tasks now this was the exercise was to do an edit task and what i did was i changed the delete button here that we had on the listing to an edit button and so basically what that meant was if i went if i go to client list um, html what I did was I changed this from an X to href that goes to task edit um, and the task that ID. And we have this already because when we left the last time, we had this route here. We had added this route for task edit colon ID. So it says that oh, if you um, remember, this is a parameterized um, route. So we had that already. No, this, this route didn't work because we referenced this task edit controller. And even though... I had created the task edit controller file for you. This says said task create. So you, you have to change this. Okay, so that was my mistake on my part. Um, when I showed it in the video, of course, you didn't have the code to see that. But when I showed it in the video, this should have been changed. The other thing that needed to happen was that in index.html, we need to go and add, um, of course, this task edit controller so that Angular would know of this new controller. So at least though, that allows us to route, to create a route that is edit and create. And both edit and create route use the same task edit HTML file. Well, let me open this a little bit. If they both use the same task edit HTML file, um, close this. If they both use the same task edit HTML file, you have a number of things. You had this H1 header that said create task. But since you're using it for both create a new task and for editing an existing task, you need some way to show a different heading. So I use the ng show directive, and I said basically if my task um, doesn't have an ID, then it's a new task. That I mean, seems to make sense. And if there's an ID, then it's an edit task. So that's how I tell you that. And I essentially hide the message that was always there. This is we would only want to show up our error message if there's a message. We wouldn't want to show this message if there's a message to show. So I use ng if here. Could have been ng show also. And then the final thing I did was instead of doing a submit on the form, which was where you submit the form and call the create task, I 
change that to just use two buttons and instead when you ng click you call create tax instead of submit on the form and then um, if you're doing a, if this is an update then it can update right so depending on which controller is being used and so again I hide them these two buttons and show them accordingly accordingly okay so that was the work that was done there on this edit form um, here I didn't have to really do anything here because we're not calling delete anymore but this is going to be moved to the edit controller because we want the user to be able to delete um, from the edit controller and not from the list controller so we're going to take that and we're going to move it over here and I'm going to worry about calling that later I'm not going to worry about calling that now all right so that was one thing so okay so let's continue and look at what we have here so I was doing some debugging so when I um, my controller here when I do run so if I click here and I go to the edit task as you can see this is showing up exactly as I like this sh it to show up um, we're getting the parameters uh, route parameters that ID are we saying call task DA on the client side that get task ID so if you remember and then once I get it I can assign it to myself the task to have it show up on the UI right now I can take out all of these but these were just for debugging and so essentially what happens is um, let's go look at my task DAO so get task by ID I had to create this too this is one of the things that um, you have to create um, I didn't put it down as a to do but we had no way of getting a particular task from the back end to load it we can get all tasks which we we have already we get all tasks we had create a task and we had delete a task but we didn't have get a spe specific task and so if you remember I need that from right here I'm gonna try and get a specific task and then save it and then if there's an er error of course I show it so how do I get a specific task my DO is gonna do that for me and so uh, getting a specific task look a lot like getting all tasks and you can get a hint from that from the task resource and you can see here um, get is arrays true this is how you get a number of tasks and then this is how you get a specific task so I just um, uh, paste copy and paste um, well actually this was already there um, uh, I don't remember it being called like get by ID but um, Anyway, I don't think I have to change anything on the resource and we can see that if we go here and I look at service and I look at resource and oh the resource that was generated there was different so you can't really compare that but anyway so you, you basically go to the resource task resource and where's my task resource task resource task 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 resource there yeah and so um, there's already this they had this get already um, and so this is just get by ID so um, I use that in my deal to get a specific task and um, uh, where is it get a specific task uh, wait a second this is not on the client side uh, yep client um, get by ID and I return it okay so task get by ID the ID and then I return it okay so that's that okay so once that um, I had that on my task deal uh, of course on my controller um, not this controller but edit controller right, there we go. my edit controller I can get that from the resource and um, I populate my task and so my task and that shows up on the front end okay so you can see that task the or the prototype get ID is a function that check and see if it does a valid task whatever and then if there's a success function just return a new task off of it if not it reject it and how it makes it it actually calls the task resource that get ID function passing this object because remember that for your task resource um, it's going to bind here it says oh I'm gonna bind from the object I get to this ID so um, there we go and so if that's on, it's good, I promise, and it runs on success. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that now allows us to populate this. Now, what happens when you, on this edit form, and I can say, 
you make some changes and now you click this update button right when you click oh so I haven't I haven't finished yet so when my task resource or the task resource do a get by ID it's gonna send it to the back end to my server so my server API needs to have this so let's look at the route on the back end I I'm sending to this here, right? API task ID. That's what I want to get. So I had a route to this um, endpoint and only delete, but I need a get also, all right? So that, that would fail. So for my task controller, I need to implement a get by ID. So let's go to my task controller backend and get by ID. Here's the get by ID that says, takes a request and a response. And out of that request, you pull out the ID which you can see you're doing the same thing here for delete. So just remove, so you can just copy it. And then look at how similar the code is. TaskDO.getById. This is the backend, of course, we're talking about. Backend, get that ID. So this is going to MongoDB using Mongoose, get by ID. If that's fine, then I map it to status 200 and adjacent and send it back. Catch error. No, backend TaskDO, look at it get by ID well add this this looks very similar to this right um, you check and make sure it's all the ID is a string if it's not then you say invalid string and then task that find by ID okay now you call in task with is a model of mongoose and so it's just a matter of um, looking up if you look here you see it says find by ID and remove so it makes sense that you can do find by ID and remove so they must be a find by ID. Another way is just to look at the documentation for uh, MongoDB and for Mongoose, okay? Which we kind of cover those find and so on by ID and stuff before when we talk about MongoDB. So I find by ID and then I execute um, passing this and says, okay, if there's an error, call this. If not, pass it here, or otherwise pass the object. And then I test here. If there's an error, then reject it you by passing this error. If not resolve, it's passing that. So that's the backend, and that's all you need to do to have support for this. So this is your DAO talking to the task schema, and um, your backend controller, you know, delegates to the DAO, and of course your route delegates there to the controller. So that allows you now to get the results and send it back to populate this form. All right. So now let's go to the edit template. So you click update after you have this now, you make the changes. So let's say I have changed my mind too much to do. And then this is not done. And I click update. And you can see um, it is updated. I've changed my mind. And if I go to edit, you can see the body's changed. And so there it is. Okay. So how do I get that to work? Well, when you click update, this goes to your edit controller, right? Uh, so we can click, close this for now. It goes to your edit controller. And so your edit controller needs to update task. And your update task is gonna say what? I wanna take this task, pass it to my DO and tell it to update this task. And if that's successful, I'm gonna get back a task, but I'm gonna ignore the fact that I get back the task. And what I just wanna do is just go back to the listing. So I have done my update, so that's successful, go to the listing. And of course, if I wasn't successfully able to update it, I'm going to put self that message. That self that message, remember, is what we're saying here, that if we get an error message, then we show it. Of course, if we don't have one, then we have nothing to show. So um, that's my update. So how is task DO that update implemented? Well, we go to the DO on the client side, and we already looked at to get by ID. So this is update. This was one of your first to do. So again, I copy pretty much the create one and make sure that we have a valid thing. This is our success function, error function. Copy it blatantly from up here. Just like, just take this create code here, copy it, and then paste it as your update code. And then now return task resource, create a new task resource and say, call update and it promised then then success and so on. 
very much like this, the create here, except I'm, I'm not doing insert. How do I know that I should call update instead? Well, I go look at my resource and I see that oh, when you do a insert, it's post and then a update is put. And we learned from when we did other HTTP stuff back in whichever video about how to do a call, wrestle call, we want to do a put. So that's the one we're going to use. And so uh, that's all there is to that. And that sends my request to the back end. Now, on the back end, let's close this, let's close that. Um, let's close, we're going to leave that, close this for now. On the back end, so let's actually, we click update, that goes to the back end. On the back end, I need to support put on this endpoint. Remember, we're not posting to it, the specific endpoint. We could have by changing the route associated that we use here in the resource. We could have said that oh, the URL for put, we could override the URL and say that oh, it should be slash API task ID, so we post that specific ID. But we didn't, so it's going to post the, just this guy. That's how it's, it's going to work. And so when I do a post, no, a put, sorry, uh, my backend needs to support that on this endpoint. So that's why I say I added this put to here. It doesn't matter if you put it first or last, but I stuck it in between. So there you go. And this sends it to the backend. Of course, I need, um, you know, to implement this. So this is the backend, sorry. So I need to implement this task that update. So if I go to server task controller and I do look at my ta um, update method on my controller, it requests response. It takes the entire body. Again, looks very much like the create. I actually copied it. And task do create, well, task do update, same thing. Passing in that object. If it's successful, blah, 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 send it back. If not, right? Look exactly, create an update looks the same. We discussed this. One uses post, the other one uses update, but at the end, it kind of looks the same. So now, how does our DAO handle the two things? Because they're slightly different. This is how we get it from the client to the back end. One is post and one is put. But now that we have both of the, the same obj the object that we want to update, how do we update that in the database? How do we tell MongoDB that I want to create something instead of I want to update something? And that's where we go to our DAO. And we look and we see that when you do a create for MongoDB, you create a new task, right? There's a Mongo, Mongoose task, schema tasks, and you say T that's save, and you pass the thing you want to save and the same reject and so on. Where's task? Here it is. This is from your schema, your Mongoose model, right? Task. This is this object that's decorated by Mongoose to have some other things. And of course, we're going to add some methods of our own. But at the end of the day, you still call a method on it. So let's do look at the update one. So for the update one, we kind of still want to check and see that we have, you know, a valid object. And if we do, or if we don't, we return. But we also know if we're going to update, we, want, we have to make sure that this has a task ID, this object that we want to see. So if it doesn't have a task ID, we're going to reject. Here, we could have checked and see that if somebody's trying to save something that has a task ID, we should reject it also. So if you have already have a task ID, you should reject it. If you don't have a task ID, you should reject it here when you do an update because you have to know what to update. And so for the query, I need to find the thing that I want to update. So that's why I create this object, which I'm calling my query. And then the, when I go to update the thing, I don't want to include the task ID in it because I don't want that to change. So I'll let Man Mongoose manage that and MongoDB. So I delete the task ID from this object that was passed in. And because I already have saved in a query. And so then I do model that update one, only one thing I want to update, and find it. This is my query. I got to find my number of other criteria, right? The name and stuff, blah, 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 whatever, date and so on. But I might find multiple things. But here, I want to make sure I tell, there's only one thing I want to update. And then we talk about some of these methods that, um, how you change things when we were fooling around with MongoDB. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But basically, I say I want to set these properties in this object. And so remember, this object now is void of the ID, so that wouldn't be overridden. So I tell Mongoose, I want to, MongoDB, I want to update this one object that you found and match in this criteria, and then, of course, execute that. And if there's an error, the updated stuff, I resolve, and that's all my back end takes care of doing the update that you see happen here when I click Update. And I can go back, and I can see that how it's done. Okay? So that's the other thing. 
Now, the next thing I want to do, this is not finished yet. So once I'm at edit, how do I, you know, I need to delete because now I put, I removed, I put delete here. It would be nice to, you know, have something that says like cancel, it'll just take me back to the list. So I'm going to add a cancel button here. And if I change my memory editing, and I'm going to add a delete button to delete this task. So let me go do that now. Um, so those are the changes I have to make to get to what I have working so far. So how do we add the rest? So again, we need a cancel button here. So let's go back to our edit, HTML, and template. And we'll just put another button. And of course, we want to show it if um, thing. But what might make this easier is if we just do this. We just, um, since we have a couple of buttons we want to show here, um, we just do this. We do um, a div and, um, and I'm going to bring this down, close this div off here, and then I'll move this ng show cut this, put it up here, then I can remove this one. And now, and G click this between there. And if I reformat things, now I have um, something that looks like this. Um, why is this sunken so far? Uh, uh, anyway, um, I expected this to be in line with the button. But anyway, I don't know why it invented it so far. But now <clears throat> I have two buttons there. And then now this is not update, but this is rather cancel. And for cancel, I really, uh, really want to do is um, redirect to, um, um, you know, you could put cancel if you want. I want to redirect to the, uh, and cancel doesn't have uh, anything to do with how valid the form is. So you don't care if the user made some changes and then the form is invalid and then they want to cancel. So, right, um, uh, gonna do that. And so um, we got a number of ways. We could actually call a cancel and then inside our thing do a cancel, cancel update. We can do that. And then we don't need to pass anything in. Um, I could just do a redirect to the, since I'm using a button though, I'm going to um, put it inside the controller instead of uh, like a hypertext link. So um, here we go. Um, dun, 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 edit controller. Okay, so I want to do a cancel and it doesn't really matter where I put it, but I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to say cancel update. Um, doesn't accept anything. Not that it matters. I'm going to take out all of this because we don't need to call any D or anything like that. And if it's successful, I copy this and I, I paste it here. Uh, I take out the extra line. Um, oh, um, this was the error. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, that up that okay so um not like this would matter because if I set a message and then force I rewrote to this path setting a message here wouldn't matter so yeah we already changed path so anyway so there we go I'm gonna reformat this and so that should give me my cancel so for some reason this one to reload so let's see uh, proceed and it's not loading my application um Let's see, take that out, run. All right, there we go. All right, so if I go to edit and I click cancel now, I should go back, right? And so that's working fine. Um, I will need these look equally, um, look equal in terms of importance. And so I'll take that out. And so for here, I'll take out the submit to delete button. I don't want to have that format in. Uh, let me see if I hit save on that, what does that make that look like? Um, not no big change. I still need to be a big button. Um, I just don't need to be a big success button. All right. And so click save. I say I should turn it like, it's like gray there. Okay, good. And then 
um, put a big red button over here, like a danger button. And so it's going to look something like this and is going to be delete and it's going to be instead of success it's going to be btn that um, danger i think it is right and it's usually red yep there we go and so now all i need to do and this is the delete button not that it matters i'm not using the id for any kind of team in um, and then this is uh, is delete task delete task and here I can pass ctrl that task that underscore id and um, if we remember from the controller edit controller we already have a delete task that takes an id and that should take care of things I'm not going to worry about prompting we did that before where you hit the delete button and then you get a prompt and then if you prompt the user, are you sure you want to delete? And then they say, yes, da -da. you can have that sort of thing. I just kind of want to move on. Um, Cause those are things we covered before. We did it in our previous to do before we use a, a generator, full stack generator. So you can certainly put those things in. I just kind of want to show you how we modify the generator to do some of the things. Okay, so um, this would certainly delete the task. And of course, if we successfully delete the task, this had said refresh because it was on the listing screen where you have to refresh the screen. But here, we're not on the list and screen, so we actually want to return to the list. And so, and then of course, if you can delete it, um, you know, we could put error message so the user can see why. So we, we delete and return, and that's done. And we edit, and we delete, and now we have nothing to do. We could click add, minute task, some stuff, and then it's done, and I do create, and then I can go edit it, it's not done. Change my mind. Other stuff to do. And then I can do update and change my mind. Da, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Now, the only thing I need to do is, like I said, push this over there. And we have done that too with how do you do. Um, so um, here's our template. And what we can do is do a row. And if you remember, we do class row in um, in when we're using um, Bootstrap. So we can say uh, you know class class equals class equals row, and then um, we can do uh, put this in another div, um, which is the column. Um, you know using the columns to to space it out and lay it out. And so let me look and see if we have some examples of that so I can kind of cheat and look like we don't have any in our task template or our HTML template. Do we have anything with uh, row and so on? Um, nope, not finding anything. Um, so our to-do stuff doesn't have any in here either. So um, oh, we copied that stuff. So yeah. So. Uh, Let's see. So this is, should be all done now. So here's how we cheat. Um, so I can't remember. See column dash nine. Remember each row is has twelve cells. So um, you can see column nine was small, large. But I haven't used Bootstrap in a while. So let me go look that up. So um, CSS. Let's look at that and grid system. And so. Here you have to do you do that row and that call yep um, so pretty close so um, we can say that call you know larger medium and then one blah 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 there's also we want to be able to shift things to the left or the right so um, we can do that too so let's see one that allows to do that. so column four and then um, let's see offset four so let's try something like that so column md4 or something they call md4 and then call them offset okay let's see so it has to add up to 12 um and um so we have class row blah 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 and there we go so let's do just that so we have row already and then if we put um div 
class um, equals column dash let's do large screen LG dash for those two buttons um, I think we need like three for example we'll see what fits and then I'll close this um, and then I'll put uh, a div around this and then slash div and then I'll do another div I say class um, and then I'll paste what I copy just now and this doesn't need to be four this is you know probably two or something and then I'll set two um, we'll see um, let's see what it looks like there and then um, I'm gonna do slash dev and then if I reformat this that's what we should have and so now I go back and look at my to do oh and that does not look like anything like what I want so let's see where there's a problem um, ng show click da 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 so uh, there's obviously there okay so don't need this there need space there and let's see if it refresh what's gonna happen does it show properly now okay so these are on this side but this is not on that side so what is happening so let's do offset um, four or let's try and see if that sort of save oh so of course I narrow my screen okay so yeah when my screen narrow is gonna fall to the bottom okay so let's see um, so this is not what I want so, uh, so let's do four here let's see what that looks like okay so that pushes that out a little bit but let me go back and see bootstrap when I want it to be offset like that how do I do it so row, um, I want something left and on the right um, the middle to be four hmm that's exactly what I kind of want um, of course I want to float my stuff all the way to the corner but um, let's see there um, let's see um, let's do this so if, if I do one so say row four and then one and then let's see what that looks like nothing changed and then make this like um, so that's eight to so make this seven so let's see if that solves anything huh so um, I definitely have to play with this to see why I'm not getting it to do the offset um, why it's not doing the offset and pushing this all the way over to the right hand side yeah that's not working so, but anyway, so you can definitely go um, try and look at that and see why that's not. And so you can see a smaller number should make this pretty much smaller. And I don't, I don't see why it's not doing it. Um, so this one is column MD3. Okay, so let's do M L um, MD. I don't think the size here. Oh, it is MD and it's LG. Okay, so let me see if that was what was causing an issue. LG, um, LG. So let's see. Um, oh yeah. So that, that's definitely not what was the issue. So um, I'm not sure why it's not pushing it all the way over. Um, I still think the column size is the width of this is this size instead of the full size. So yeah, I'm not exactly sure um, what that is. So we're in a container. Um, let me see. So div there um, container. Um, let me see. Photo container. Hmm. Uh, I wonder if this has anything to do with it. So let me take this out. And see so some of the, the, the yeah okay so I like those rounded button anyway so uh, 
yeah I'm not sure why um, let me pull this out of the form it shouldn't shouldn't be no I'm kind of wanting to get this address now so let me see this here uh, I've made that F format and let's see yep still yep still not doing it so anyway so you could play with that to get that to push over all the way if i resolve it i'll tell you what the problem is but it certainly look like um it thinks that the little row is just here but at least i pushed it a little bit away and just either it should be centered or should be centered as far over here. so that takes care of that um the other thing i would say is you probably want to add a cancel button here so if i want to cancel creating a task i can do that too and so that is fairly easy we know to do that now with the edit form um you have a cancel button here, you could copy it, go to, oh, well, we want that cancel to show up regardless of if you're doing um, um, things. So we can do the same thing here with a div. Um, I can do div, um, div, and then I put this create button in there. And then also I want a cancel button in there. Oh, we format. Um, so I want a cancel button. And of course I want ng show to be applied to this div paste. And let's save it. And so now um, there is a cancel button. Of course it's not going to work. And so what I need is for my control here, I need this cancel function, copy this, put it on my create function. Anyway, here is fine. And I reformat. And there you go. All right. And so now if I do cancel, it goes back to the thing. I do add task, uh, edit, um, thing. Um, now my my task is a little bit weird it's not aligned with add but those are cosmetic things the f functionality wise we have what we want we have um, edit we have add or create and so you know um, that certainly is working fine too so that gives us pretty much what we had before without the security um, and so we can look at how do we save when we add something we save it the current logged in user or you know, of course, we have to put uh, create um, resources and so on for saving users. But if we can do it for tasks, certainly you can see how to do it for users. And it's just a matter of when a user logged in, you save it. So we did that already um, when we did it before. So this is the core functionality. If you can understand how to do this, then you can add forms for users and stuff. So I'm not going to rebuild that par par part of it. What I'm going to do in the next video is show you how we can start using Bootstrap. We can build this application using um, Material UI. And then I'll just show you how to cons get it converted to Material UI. And again, the same thing is going to apply where you can just, you know, modify it. All of the same things that will remain. The reason to move into Material UI, UI only changes how you control look. It doesn't change the operation and all the other JavaScript and so on that you would be using. All right. So, okay. So I think um, that's good enough for this video. And we pretty much have everything we need for, in terms of managing tasks. Um, you can, you know, to, to add users to, to this. So uh, we're not going to go through that because we did it before. And it's just going to make this part of the video long or this section when it's something we have already done. Um, and that's nothing specific to NG full stack since NG full stack doesn't even give you users out of the box. So it's just a matter of creating a resource, getting the API for, for users and manage them the same way as we did by hand before. All right then, thanks for your time. See you in the next video when we're gonna look at just how do we pull in um, Angular material and then we are done with this entire series because we went from not knowing how to do anything to in web development to looking at how to write HTML, how to do CSS, how to do JavaScript, then how learning Angular, then learning about Bower and Yeoman and um, 
then using a generator and then using a specific generator and we, we developed the whole thing we developed the application by hand then we saw all the headache of doing that with express and everything and then how the generator helped us to make things faster so we went through a number of things so thanks for your time your patience if after this series you'd like to continue doing some other things with me i'm doing a go programming series it's already started so just jump over and check that out and then soon i'll be adapting this material to put it on like udemy D is one place i want to put it udemy and so i'll let you know um, but stay tuned if you enjoy the material um, take care thanks again for your time and your support see you in the next video bye